Hi everybody. Hey. Welcome to Lounge Room with Lola. <laughs> you guys, I'm still like trying to figure out what I want my intro to be, but for now, we're just going to vibe out. And it's just going to just going to flow. This is all about flow. My word of the year is calm, a state of calm, a state of being, a state of living in the present and just going with the flow not having so much resistance i think that when you try to control everything and you know that stems from so many different things that's a topic for a different day but control is like not what god wants us to uh, like hold on to so tightly you know what i'm saying like the only person who should be controlling our lives is god like obviously there are the controllables and the uncontrollables there are the things that we can there are things that we definitely can be in control of, like our schedules and saying we're going to do something and keeping promises to ourselves, you know, and then there's also the things that we can't control, like somebody cutting me off on the road or something happening that I didn't expect, something turning out different. They're just things that you can't control. And I'm learning to breathe and release the tight grip that I have on control because it's not taking my life in the direction I want it to go. So I let go and I let God, period. Anyways, y'all, today I wanted to talk about self-love. I think that, well, I just think it's so on point to talk about self-love because it is the month of February, okay? Um, it's the month of love and I think what better thing to discuss than self-love? I think love begins with self. I think everything begins with self. It's from, it's like inside out. Um, and I think that when you, I don't think self-love is something you will ever master. Just like I feel like being your best self is not anything you will ever master. That's why I think it's called self-mastery because I think it's like an ongoing thing. I don't think it's like there's like an end point. It's like an infinity. Like you can always work daily towards your best self. You can always have these healthy practices and habits and routines and mindsets and, you know, patterns that are geared towards your best self and loving yourself and, you know, self-love. But there's never that point that you reach because every day that just continues, you learn something new about yourself. And I think that's what makes life so beautiful and entertaining and just something that you can look forward to daily. And you're just always growing. You know, life is about evolving and alchemy and like turning, um, you know, pressure into diamonds and turning hard moments into glory, you know. And life is just such a beautiful contradiction. But I think what is great is that when you have God on your side, you will always win. Um, and I just want to quickly say something. Um, I recently saw this post on Instagram and it was talking about how the lotus flower, you know, the flower that sits on top of a lily pad, um, it grows in the mud. And I think about how in life we are, I don't want to say put in these situations because that sounds like a force. And I want to really think that life and God, most importantly, doesn't put us in anything. We have our own free will and God allows things to happen, but we ultimately really, it falls on us to be obedient to God, you know? But I think about how we go through these situations in life and, um, I hope y'all cannot hear my heat in the back. <laughs> that was, y'all feel like my heat is so loud. Like it, I just thought somebody was banging on the door just now. I'm sorry, y'all. I hope you guys didn't hear that. Um, but I think that, um, so I, it's just like, it's not, it's not a, a concept that is so amazing to me and so almost like grounding to know that a beautiful, like one of the most beautiful flowers, I think all flowers are beautiful, but the lotus flower, it, it grows in the mud. And when we think about the mud, we can relate that to our lives as to a situation that's sticky and maybe even dark, you know, and gloomy and ugh, 
depressing even or just like you get to rock bottom you know and we feel like all this pressure is on us we feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders we feel like this it's never going to end we feel like we're never going to come out and then the roots shoot you know everything starts to grow and little do we know that priming happens in the darkness this faith building and character building and just strengthening of ourselves happens in the darkness as much as we may despise it or not like it or just ugh, like dread it i think when we start to become okay with accepting that not even i don't want to say normalizing ugh, like sadness but just normalizing the fact that life is not all glitz and glam and that is in the moments of the most difficult times of your life that make you your best self and this is also why I like wanted to start a podcast because I think about how when I was in some of my most darkest days podcasts well God most importantly is what got me through to this person that I am and this mindset that I have and this faith and this this heart and courage that I have but I think about how I listen to podcasts um really quick I just want to quickly know some of my favorite podcasts this is so like I just wanted to say this I didn't even write this down um I didn't write any of this down, y'all. I'm just going with God's grace and he's giving me the words and I'm speaking to y'all in a way that he wants me to. But some of my favorite podcasts, Lori Harder, I have to just say her, y'all, because something about this woman, you know, I think everyone has their favorite podcast. Everyone is different and everybody has the things that speak to them. But Lori Harder is my girl. Something about her vulnerability. She's so genuine. I feel like she really wants to see people win. I feel like she's so selfless and something about the way she speaks is so touching. And she's, it's almost like she's not like we've lived the same life because obviously that's not possible, but it's like, you can tell she's been through so many trials and her like deepest desire is to share her journey and just help others. Um, And she's so bold and courageous. And I admire people who turn pain into glory and who turn, difficulty into strength so that's just my biggest thing like anybody who's made it out the mud or who has just turned a difficult situation into something that has actually been the best thing that's ever happened to them I admire and so Lori Harder is I think it's the um I think it's the it's the Lori Harder show I'm sorry earn your happy podcast earn your happy podcast um and I also love I think it's mindset talk. So Jim Ron is one of like my also favorite, um, like just motivational speakers, I would say. Um, I think just having a way with words is what impacts me because you can say something, but it's really the way you say it. Um, and just, you know, everyone's unique. Everybody has that voice to them and everybody has that um, fire, you know, in their own way. So anything with Jim Ron, um, I love Ed Milet. I love how he how he attributes everything to God. Um, who else do I love? I can't think right now. Um, oh, Woman of Lynn, obviously, Tamani Lynn. If you're listening to this, hey girl, love, love, love her podcast. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. There are some like on the tip of my tongue. I didn't write these down. I probably should have, but um I love the Steve Harvey show. I like how he has like these eight to ten minute um like just episodes where he talks about he starts his podcast he's like wow um I have my own show like it's like he's like he says it's like he has the same like three sentences he says at the beginning of each episode and it's just like him like in awe of like accepting and like actually realizing like sometimes I think we don't really fully like sit in our blessing and like actually go like wow like God really did this for me and he takes like every episode to be like wow God did this, you know, and he attributes everything to God. He always talks about how God is everything. He's nothing up without God. And I really, really love that. Um, y'all, who else do I really, really like? I love Powerhouse Woman. I really like Powerhouse Woman. I think she's so genuine. Um, there are a couple of other podcasts that I really like, y'all, but the ones that I said, it's because I've recently listened. Oh, I love um, Jay Shetty, Tom Bailu. Um, Tom Bailu's bomb. Jay Shetty's bomb. Um, there's a podcast that I want to name and I can't think of. But those are like the podcasts that I play like in my moments of like, I don't feel like doing this. I don't want to work on my dreams. I'm just tired. I want to give up. Um, that's what I turn on. 
and it gets me going, honey. Like it's so important to, and this aligns with self-love, you know, like it's so important to push yourself because no one is going to do it for you, honey. I don't know what you thought this was, but no one is going to do it for you. And I recently just posted a quote on my lounging with Lola um, Instagram page. If you guys don't follow me on there yet, I'll put it in the show notes so that you can. And I'll just share more quotes and things that align with the podcast, um, just the things I'll be talking about. But self-love is like, it's this beautiful, grand thing. And it's it's just so many layers to dissect and to um, unravel. And it's just like, I think it's like, an, it can be a never ending conversation, honestly. But I think that when you really love yourself, it's like a power. It's like an, uh, an electro, uh, <laughs> electrification. Is that a word, y'all? It's like a, just like a, a power, like a charge, like a electromagnetic field. Like it's just like this force. Um, and it's, it's God, period. I mean, God is the one who instills this wisdom within us. He's the one who gives us these life experiences so that we can aid and so that we can grow in our self-love. I mean, I think that choosing yourself is self-love. I think that putting yourself first is self-love. And, you know, I think everyone is always like, oh, saying no, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, saying no is self-love. Um and I think that before you can start saying no, it starts with the mindset. Um, you really have to stand on business and stand on the things that you say that you're not going to put up with and stand true to the woman or the man that you are. So when you are aligning yourself with those values and those morals and those beliefs, um, I'm really big on stoicism. I'm actually dropping another podcast soon episode where I'm going to talk about stoicism a little more. I'm actually going to do multiple stoicism episodes because if you guys know me, I've been posting, I read the daily stoic, um, by Ryan holiday. Um, and I just absolutely love stoicism. I just think Amor Fati and the belief and just, like I say, turning pain into purpose is my thing. So if it, if it aligns with that, I'm 10 toes down for it. But, um, So yeah, like saying no and like it all starts with an identity. And I think obviously this was talked about in Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I think his book like really, really did well because he talks about something that I, and I think the way he words it and the way he puts it into play and the context surrounding it is like, you really have to make an identity switch. Like before we start saying all the, like telling people to do all these things, like, oh, say no and have boundaries. Like, what does that even really mean? I feel like sometimes people don't even know what that really means. Like, unless you're doing the self-awareness work and the work of the, like the inner child healing and like, you know, the mindset shift, like starting to believe the best, looking at the glass half full, being optimistic, you know, turning negative self-doubt, both self-doubting beliefs to self-limiting, sorry, whew, y'all, self-limiting beliefs to when I, when I get excited about something, my words run. <laughs> Can y'all tell? My words will run, honey, okay? But turning these self-limiting beliefs to self-empowering beliefs and self-motivating um, and, you know, just positive beliefs about yourself. Um, I think that we have really been given this free will of knowing most importantly that as God's children we have been called if you're listening to this right now and if you're breathing if you're alive you know um things may not be as perfect as you want them to be um your circumstances may not be what you thought they would be but you're healthy you I want to say you have a roof over your head, you know, and even if you don't, you know, whatever your circumstances may be, I, I don't know. I think that if you are, a, if you are breathing, you have a mind, you have the ability to change your life and to form it in the way you want it to be. But you have to really believe that for yourself. Like no one is going to come save you. And I think that I almost think of like this, like, I think of like a baby being pushed out of like a mother's, you know, when it's time for 
birth, I just, I think of like self-love in that way, like for an analogy, like just like bursting out of that uncomfortable feeling, you know, well, comfortable feeling because it's comfortable to just stay the same and to stay with the familiar and the things that you know, but it's uncomfortable to go into a place of, I'm really stepping out on faith. I'm, you know, I'm a little scared, but I don't know. Like that, I don't know is like God guiding you. Like I was watching a sermon, completely forgot who it was. I want to say it was Sarah Jakes Roberts, but she was like, if God's job is faith. So if God doesn't like allow you to go through these things where like you have to like guess, wonder, like not know the next step, et cetera, like he wouldn't have a job like the reason why we have to guess we have to like wonder we have to continuously pray in all situations not when we want but in all situations when we have it and when we don't have it when we're good and when we're not good um i think that god that's his job is to strengthen our faith so that we can stay close to him so that we can be protected and guided by him if we thought we could do it all on our own, why would we need God? Just let that sink in. I remember when I heard that in the sermon, I was like, oh, wow. I said, wow, y'all. I said, let me just let me just sit and wonder. Oh, another side note. I like I like doing a little side notes because my the way my brain be, <laughs> y'all, it's so funny. The way my brain connects things, it's just like my brain is like a I wish I could put it into words. I wish I was a brain doctor. That would have been bomb. But no, (laughs) y'all, it's it's crazy how, I mean, God would just put these like little things in my head and I'll think about these past situations or I think all the reading that I do has benefited me because I can just relate so many things to one topic. But um, (sighs) Who is the billionaire that I'm trying to think of? Wow, that's that's embarrassing. Warren Buffett. Um, I get these Inc. News newsletters. I believe they're bi-weekly or weekly, um, but they just give these like fire financial um, nuggets or just wise, you know, I like just anything beneficial, like mindset, um, self-growth, self-development um, nuggets. And it was talking about how Warren Buffett, he feels like his biggest um, secret. I mean- I don't, he's not the, I don't think he's a guy to use the word secret. He doesn't really have a secret. He just, he says things for what they are. But I think the article said his biggest factor that played a role in his success was that he um, was able to sit and think. He took time to sit and think. I think we live in a lifestyle and a life. Okay. Especially here in America, we are on go. It's wake up, get up, grind, yada, yada no sleep and as we are becoming more into this holistic health and just mind body connection and just really like learning about our bodies and things that they truly need we're learning that we cannot be on go with three hours of sleep it's not healthy our brain is screaming help me our body is like what's going on our gut health is slowly diminishing so it's just like we're learning all of these things that we can't be living this like all gas, no breaks life. I mean, we're just going to end up being burnt out. But Warren Buffett said his biggest um, factor that played a you know role in, in his success is that he was able to sit and think and reflect. And so what that allows him to do is to, one, it helps with his um, decision making. Um, it helps him not be, I think in business, it's important to not be so indecisive. Um, I'm learning this because for me, I feel like, girl, <laughs> girl. That's like my like, mm, it's a little flaw for me. Okay, I'm a little indecisive. I mean, I stand on I stand on my flaws. I'm not scared of nothing, but God. <laughs> but like, I know the things that I need to work on. I know the things that I'm not good at, but I also know that I can't be good at everything. Um, you have to know your strengths and know your weaknesses and play off that. But um, indecisiveness is something because I just want the whole world. Okay, honey, the world is my oyster. Don't make me don't make me choose. I want it all. But no, for real. Um, <laughs> so he uh, Warren Buffett was talking about how he he feels like a lot of people don't don't do this so that's why there's the one percent and the one percent do this they sit and think and reflect they read a lot they consume a lot of knowledge but then they take the time to sit and think 
and make really wise, carefully thought out decisions. And it's like, I read that and I was like, I really, and I just, like I said this in my first episode, well, after the pilot, the bringing in, bringing in the new year one, I said this, like my word of the year is calm. I'm in a state of calm. I'm in a state of being present. I'm in a state of not rushing and I'm in a state of like not worrying. Like if it's not turning out high, like how it's not panning out how I wanted to, I'm not going to sit here and do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like if I have done everything in my power and it's not looking the way I thought, honey, I am letting go and letting God. Okay. God does everything for a reason. And I will always stand on that. But, um, yeah, so he was saying that and I think that's so deep. Like we really, um, have to sit, sit, think and reflect. And I've read that and I feel like that helps me so much with decision making. And I think if you're listening to this and whether it's you're a business owner or, you know, you just, you're in your career or I think we all live these lives where we have to make really important decisions. And so that's really helpful advice um, to just sit, think, reflect. And I think um, Warren Buffett said he's able to be in meetings and he's able to, you know, make decisions that are, you know, conducive to company growth or, you know, just things that are going to make the company thrive um, because he has spent time sitting and thinking. He doesn't have to make decisions that are so rushed or so flustered or so last minute. They're carefully thought out. And nine times out of 10, I'm that's so beneficial. You can imagine. I can imagine. So I just thought that was something really good to share especially considering how in 2024 we are so like just all gas no breaks and i am the queen of all gas no breaks honey i sh- that should be tatted on my forehead no well not really but you get what i'm saying like i just like <laughs> if you know me like i just work so hard and what i'm learning is that the key to success is not necessarily working so hard but working smart and using systems and technology and delegating and, you know, doing these things that are going to help you, you know, you don't want to spread yourself so thin. I mean, we, at the end of the day, are energetic beings. Like we only have so much energy, you know, we can't exhaust ourselves and expect things to turn out. So, oh my God, amazing. Like it's just not going to happen. So anyways, anyways, y'all, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, so self-love is more than possible um self-love is just the art of choosing yourself mind mentally spiritually physically emotionally i just want to quickly note i'm not really one i know this is going to sound bad but i'm not really one who like like i'm getting into the habit of talking more about my own products as a business owner but i do have a wellness planner um where i want to say it targets self-love and this like inner child healing and like this listening to the voice deep within you healing those wounds and healing the things that are kind of blocking your blessings or just like getting in the way of your growth um so i have a 90-day wellness planner and it's a mind it's mental spiritual physical and emotional and you just there's like three lines for each section and you just fill it out daily. There's a space, a page for you to have your schedule where you can um, plan out your day, time blocks, um, a space for notes and having an end of the end of the day recap. As we all know, a super, super important key to success is um, taking inventory and and acknowledging how the day went so that you're not just mindlessly moving through life. If you feel like today wasn't a good day, okay, that's cool. We're human. I've had many of those days. Okay. But I don't let that stop me. Um, so just taking inventory of like, well, what, well, what, what, well, wow. What, 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 what went well that day? And, um, you know, using that as a guide to improve the next day or work on something different the next day or realize like maybe like, your mindset was lacking, your mental, like you woke up feeling groggy and you let that carry on throughout the day. 
instead of using affirmations, instead of praying, instead of journaling, instead of doing something about turning your day around, you let that affect you. So that's what that planner is for. And I sell it. You can get it on my website, holisticola.com. There will be links in the show notes. But for now, you guys, we're going to wrap up this episode. I hope that this empowered you to just choose yourself. Um, I think just focus on daily growth, not the long haul. I think, you know, like James Clear says, think of habits like compound interest, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit every day. And one day it's going to boom, explode. So just pray to God, pray to him about your desires. At the end of the day, we're God's children and he knows our hearts and he knows the things that we want. He knows that he knows what we want. And I think the bridge between where you are and where you want to be is self-love, is choosing yourself, is listening to what you really, really want and, and stepping out on faith. You have to step out on faith. Fear will always be there, but fear does not make decisions. And if you read um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, you know what I'm talking about? She has this beautiful analogy in her book where she just basically says, like, fear is always going to be there, especially as creatives and as artists as business owners and entrepreneurs and people who are just taking risks and stuff like that. Um, Fear is always going to be there, but fear don't make no decisions over here, honey. Okay. Sorry, fear. You're going to have to sit this one out. Actually, you're going to sit all of them out. You're going to sit all the decisions out. You're just going to be there, but you can't make the final decision. It's not happening. Sorry. God said you can't do that because God is a God of faith. Okay. So anyways, y'all, I'm closing the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to rate the show y'all and Look at the show notes for the things that I put there so that you guys can, you know, we can stay collectively together. I'm also going to have a link to my email list. I send monthly emails, positive emails, just optimistic emails, emails that are going to, you know, just fuel, fuel your fire. So thank you guys so much for listening and I will see you guys next time. Bye.